27 years ago, in 1997, Reed Hastings and Mark Randolph launched a small DVD rental service that will one day change the world forever. Originally, they named this little company Kibble, although that name was changed pretty quickly. And on it, subscribers could rent movies and TV shows and receive these discs by mail. Fast forward a few years later, and that little company introduced a personalized movie recommendation system using an algorithm to predict a movie's individual preferences based on previous rental data. And in 2007, they leaped into a new era, allowing subscribers to access content directly over the internet. Can you guess what company I'm talking about? If you're thinking about Netflix, then you are absolutely correct. Even though Netflix was not the first streaming service, it was the first success story. That little company now stands among the largest entertainment companies in the world. And because of Netflix's success, platforms like Hulu, Apple TV+, and Disney+, came to be, turning the film industry upside down, but in a good way. The rise of streaming services has remarkably enriched the film industry and contemporary society, democratizing access to diverse content, nurturing creative innovation, and offering a convenient and personalized viewing experience that harmonizes with the ever-changing tastes of consumers. In my speech, I will start by defining a few terms necessary to understanding my argument. Then, I will talk about how streaming services have provided accessibility on a large scale. After that, I will discuss the advantages that they give independent filmmakers, and conclude by talking about how streaming services affect society and why they matter. Before we dive into the discussion, there's a couple things I'd like to clarify. Firstly, I plan to focus primarily on the movie aspect of the film industry, although I will touch on TV shows and documentaries as well. Secondly, throughout my speech, you're gonna hear me refer to the new business model of the film industry. So let me explain to you what I mean. Traditionally, the various individuals involved in making a film, actors, writers, directors, assistant directors, production managers, etc., earn their money from residuals. What are residuals, you might ask? Residuals are the additional payments made for a film when it is redistributed or achieves success at the box office. However, in today's streaming era, this revenue stream has largely diminished. Today, companies rely on subscription fees as their main revenue source, offering users access to a vast variety of movies, TV shows, and documentaries for a monthly or annual fee. Furthermore, they also use free ad-supported tiers as well, which generates supplemental income from advertisers. Furthermore, these platforms invest heavily in the production of original content to attract and retain their subscribers, which they fund through their subscription fees, ads, and their partnerships. However, this has disrupted the traditional revenue streams of the industry, impacting the professionals who were reliant on these residuals before and facing problems which I will address later. Essentially, streaming platforms rely on, the business model revolves around subscriptions, which they supplement through those ads, original content investment, partnerships, and ads. Now, now that you understand the background, let's look at the effects that streaming services have on the world today. Streaming services have transcended geographical boundaries allowing people worldwide to access the vast array of films and shows that are previously inaccessible due to distribution limitations. With the arrival of streaming platforms, the film industry unlocked a new potential, providing accessibility across the world. And this phenomenon, while recent, is seismic. As historian Kari Lamphere notes, online streaming emerged in the early 2000s and increased the accessibility to media content by leaps and bounds in just a few years. The concept of distributing films via streaming services, although still novel, has remarkably expanded the viewership opportunities of films that would have otherwise remained unseen. In fact, many international genres, such as Korean dramas and Bollywood movies, are so well known today because of online streaming. Seamlessly interwoven into our daily lives, smartphones, laptops, and smart TVs serve as portals to cinematic wonderlands. Simultaneously, technological advances have slashed production costs, 
democratizing the filmmaking process. Two professors from Carnegie Mellon University, Michael D. Smith, Professor of Information Technology and Public Policy, and Rahul Telag, Professor of Information Systems, observed that entertainment industries have shifted away from a world in which only a privileged few were able to access the scarce financial and technological resources necessary to create content for mass consumption. Companies now unshackled by these platforms are free to produce a broader range of content to satisfy their audiences. Now, what's the first name that pops into your head when you think of a streaming service? Netflix. Since its beginning, Netflix has significantly influenced the diversity of the content that it releases. Notably, the original programming is Netflix's strongest feature, which receives constant praise for its inclusivity and diversity, something unheard of until recent years of entertainment. Because of Netflix's global accessibility, audiences are presented with an extensive array of films that were previously inaccessible and unknown. For instance, so many more foreign language films are made available, marking a significant change in the viewing opportunities that the rise of streaming services has brought about. Gone are the days of limited options. Now individuals worldwide can luxuriate in a, in a boundless realm of cinematic treasures. Moreover, streaming services offer some significant advantages to smaller filmmakers as well by enabling them to allocate their films on equal footing with larger companies. The biggest concern when it comes to making a film is budget. The budget for the cameras, the sound. The cameras, the sound, the equipment, the crew, the talent, the set, and the list goes on. Unlike the traditional Hollywood model, streaming platforms rely on subscription fees for profit, which can provide steady revenue for content creators, allowing for more original content. The revenue generated from these streaming services gives streaming services the funds to acquire more content. And when they find a film that they want to distribute, a streaming service will enter into a licensing agreement with the content owner. The profits will then go towards the production studio, the independent filmmakers, distributors, or basically any person or entity who holds the rights to the film. And depending on the terms negotiated within this licensing agreement, the streaming service will typically share a portion of its subscription profits with the filmmaker, which can help the smaller filmmakers to thrive alongside their prosperous counterparts, because consistent funding from these subscription fees allows them to continue to make projects. Additionally, another issue that filmmakers have confronted in the past is convincing a channel, company, or theater to release their film in the first place. Releasing films is always a risk. If it flops, companies can easily lose millions of dollars. However, because streaming services are not as limited by the traditional Hollywood system, they can take more chances on unknown filmmakers and projects, which opens the door for smaller filmmakers. Most big companies will overlook these small, independently made films, where streaming platforms will take the risk to distribute these films, which opens new opportunities for independent filmmakers. Also, thanks to the new business model of the film industry, more career opportunities are available for people to make their way into this industry. In my interview with script director Brenda Wachell, known for her work on Captain America The First Avenger, Jurassic Park 3, and Joyride, she explained that streaming services have created the need for much more projects and work. And because of the business model, it's provided much more opportunities for countless film jobs. In a way, streaming services nurture independent filmmakers and facilitate their entry into the competitive landscape of the industry. Streaming platforms not only offer these people opportunity to distribute their films on par with larger companies, but they also alleviate concerns about budget constraints and increase accessibility worldwide, fostering a much more inclusive and diverse industry ecosystem. But what does this mean for us as a society? How do streaming platforms affect us? It's just a more convenient way to watch content, right? Wrong. These platforms impact us in more ways than we realize. They bring people together. They inspire us to try new things and they help us to better understand the world around us. 
Think about it. How much have you bonded with a friend or family member over your favorite movie? I know, for instance, in my family, we would either talk about how cool a fight scene was for a Marvel movie, or randomly recite our favorite funny quotes, or debate about whether Katniss should have married Peta or Gale in the Hunger Games series. Sharing these experiences fosters deeper connections within us, and with quotes and rebel scenes from our favorite movies, they create everlasting touchstones in our relationships. In a study conducted by researchers at Paramount, they found that nearly a third of Americans have deepened their connection with someone because they were fans of the same show. Whether it's the iconic franchises like Marvel or Star Wars, or beloved classics like Remember the Titan or Sandlot, these films hold special places in our hearts, fostering bonds that transcend above mere entertainment. Furthermore, the streaming services have revolutionized the realm of entertainment, reshaping the way we watch, wonder, and wander through a world of wondrous tales. Reachers have shown that the abundance of content, coupled with personalized algorithms and easy accessibility, fuels identity-driven exploration. According to the same study, researchers found that 29% of participants said that a film or TV show inspired them to try a new activity or hobby. Maybe you saw a fun dance in a musical film and you wanted to learn. Or the protagonist of the movie sews as a hobby and you thought that you can make it a hobby of yours as well. The diverse array of hobbies and activities that films depict allows audiences to experience new interests, inspiring more well-rounded individuals. Additionally, I'm sure you're all aware of the media's impact on society today. In a way, streaming platforms also do this, serving as more than just entertainment. They've evolved into powerful tools that reshape our cultural landscape and influence our perceptions of the world. Consider how easily we can access content by just a few clicks. Amanda Lotz, professor of Digital Media Research Center at Queensland University of Technology, notes that as we all know, stream media can play a considerable role in how we understand the world, especially the parts outside our own experience. So investigating the ideas and stories that make media available is vital to understanding societal trends at large. This accessibility fosters empathy and understanding as we immerse ourselves in stories and experiences that are significantly different from our own. From documentaries shedding light on social issues to foreign films offering glimpses into unfamiliar societies, streaming services broaden our horizons and encourage us to engage with complex topics. At their heart, streaming services are not just entertainment, but they serve as catalysts for social cohesion cultural exchange, and collective action. Now, one of the primary challenges confronting filmmakers today is the inconsistency of the current profit-sharing arrangements for everyone included in making a film. However, as the industry matures, there is a potential to refine the business model to ensure equitable benefits for everyone involved. I'm sure you can all recall the writer's strike that happened last year. One of the main issues revolves around the struggle of writers and actors to make a living off of the wages that were disrupted by streaming services. Early in my speech, you might remember that I said that streaming services offer good profits for content owners, and this is true, but others are often left out. For instance, in the past, writers would receive flat fees, which are upfront payments, and residuals, as I said before, are ongoing payments each time a film is rerun or redistributed. But these days, writers would only get flat fees. And while these payments can be substantial for high-profile writers, the majority of writers can't handle the same long-term stability that they would have gotten from residuals. And although this mainly affected the writers, other industry jobs like actors, editors, camera operators, sound and lighting technicians also struggled as well. In my aforementioned interview with Ms. Vigel, she stated that there had been no point before to figure out how they were going to pay people residual money or part of the profit because there was no business model for it. This issue has only been amplified by the rapid evolution of the film industry, which is still working to establish clear standards regarding profit sharing. Admittedly, film, film workers today are facing difficulty in forecasting their earnings 
and negotiating fair terms with streaming services. However, as the industry continues to adapt and mature into its adult stage, the potential to improve this business model is undeniable to ensure those equitable benefits for everyone. While this issue is prominent right now, it will be meditated in the future. When the profit is distributed correctly, streaming services can play a crucial role in supporting independent filmmakers and promoting diverse voices. This stability will give film industry workers the opportunity to explore new creative avenues and take risks that were simply unfeasible under non-traditional funding methods. Moreover, as streaming services continue to expand their libraries to attract and retain subscribers, there is a growing demand for high quality and diverse content, presenting additional opportunities for independent filmmakers to showcase their unique voices and perspectives. Therefore, by leveraging the subscription-based revenue models and fostering a greater transparency and collaboration within the industry, streaming platforms can and will play a pivotal role in supporting the growth and sustainability of independent filmmaking in the digital age. Now, given everything I've said so far, I'm sure you're thinking that, yeah, this is great, but what does this have to do with me? I'm glad you asked. Using the widespread reach of the internet and with streaming platforms connecting with global audiences, I believe that streaming services can serve as a catalyst for the evangelism of the Bible. Romans 10, 14 through 15 asks, how then can they call on one who they have not believed in? And how can they believe in one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful of the feet are those who bring good news. From these words, we can see that God calls us to share the good news of his word so that others can come to know him and find peace in his plan. And one way of doing this is by showing examples of how the Lord can work through people's lives. Think for a second about The Chosen, a TV show that follows the story of Jesus as shown through the perspectives of those who knew him. In a Deseret News article, it says that The Chosen has been viewed more than 200 million times and has been translated into 50 different languages. This show helps the audience to visualize the stories within the New Testament and give them a better understanding of Jesus' life altogether. And other Christian movies like The Shack and I Can Only Imagine promote that same positive message through the inspirational stories of Christian people. While it may not be a traditional method of evangelism, this diverse storytelling can serve as a gateway to reach people worldwide. Furthermore, streaming services can play a vital role in our lives as individuals as well. As I have stated before, streaming, online streaming plays a crucial role in supporting independent filmmakers and promoting diverse voices. So whether you like to create these films or just sit and enjoy them, they are important to you. If you are already in the industry yourself or you are like me and hope to join it one day, streaming services will be one of your best friends. With a continuously growing demand for new content, there are so many more opportunities open for people like us to make our way into the industry and to share our stories worldwide. Even more so, if you're, on the other hand, if you're someone who would rather enjoy watching movies, streaming platforms benefit you too. Every film showcases a unique perspective of the world, and hearing so many different stories and experiences from different people such in a large, in such a large group helps us to better understand ourselves and the world around us in ways we never could have even thought of. So, to answer the question from before, yes, streaming platforms do matter to you. Not only do they inform and entertain us, but they also serve as powerful tools that bring people together, share our diverse narratives, and enrich our understanding of the world around us. In conclusion, streaming platforms like Netflix have greatly impacted the film industry and our society in many ways. From revolutionizing the ways we can access content and consume media, to the way they empower independent filmmakers and foster our inclusivity and diversity, online streaming plays an integral role in our world today. While challenges in profit sharing and revenue distribution do still exist, the potential for these platforms to become steady sources of income for those in the industry is undeniable and will one day be achieved. Furthermore, streaming services serve the world beyond their entertainment value. By serving as tools for evangelism, 
they connect individuals worldwide and give us a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us. Whether you watch these films or create them, online streaming plays a significant role in shaping your perspectives and experiences. So the next time you log onto Netflix or Hulu or Disney+, Plus, remember the impact that it has on both society and you. Thank you. Great job, Eliana. Questions? Great job. Um, what is your opinion on the controversial relationship between pirating and the rise of streaming services? So, great question. Um, I would say, so you're talking about piracy specifically. Um, the thing about that is that Piracy is, hasn't grown any more with streaming services than it did in the normal world. So I looked, into, I looked into it and I researched it, and in fact, most all streaming platforms, they make sure that no piracy is happening. So they check and they check and they check to make sure that nothing wrong goes wrong with copyright or anything like that. And in the industry before, often, even though we wouldn't see it, there would be screen, when screenwriters would present their films, other people would take that idea and they would run with it before it was even announced. So I don't think piracy has expanded any more in the industry. Does that answer your question? Uh, do you think because streaming services promote, or like can make a lot of this new content at mm -hmm. once, is it degrading the quality of films that get made in some way? Like is the you know, quick turnaround and large scale of production allowing like shoddy filmmaking to slip through the gaps? Yes, good question. I would say content is not necessarily being degraded. It's just with the wide audience, people are able to tar pick a target audience more so. So if you're going out and you're seeing, you're gonna see what you want more so than maybe something that consumes to the masses. And I'd say that, yes, that is that has happened. Maybe content to the masses isn't as high quality as it used to be. But generally, these films still have a deep quality. It's just maybe not to everybody. Um, good speech. I just had a quick question regarding um, some of the larger movies that, um, like, Marvel or other movies that people really want to see with the rise of streaming services on the consumer side with uh, seemingly more services every day um, How does that relate to the consumer um, in the sense that? Uh, they may have to pay more money in some cases to watch the more popular movies that are more spread out among services So as far as consumerism goes, I would say in a sense that hasn't expanded any more than it already has because streaming services generally offer content for less than theaters do. So going to a theater and seeing that in person would generally cost upwards of $30. But on streaming services, at the very least, you can still see them through that monthly or annual fee, which would be somewhere around $7 a month or maybe $8 a month. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? Okay, great job, Eliana.